So before I go through this, uh, this production data, I wanted to put it out there that this is, uh, this is just a forecast. Um, Robbins' numbers are based on input from, from his extensive network, but then Growbest have their figures, and Gabriel and Manoj also have their views uh, from, on Ecuador and India. But what's interesting is that the views of all the panelists are kind of going in the same direction. So, so here we go. According to data from, from Robbins, global production is forecast to have dropped around 315,000 metric tons in 2020 to, uh, to 3.39 million. And this includes around 225,000 metric tons of black tiger shrimp. That's a drop of around 8%, uh, so not as steep as the 16% which uh, was being forecast last September when we did the, the last webinar. Then for 2021, there's a recovery being forecast, 3.69 million metric tons, which would be uh, just under the 2019 level. Now looking at the main production regions, um, Asian production fell by close to 400,000 metric tons to around 2.22 million. Uh, this is set to recover in, uh, in 2021, as you can see from the, uh, the data here in blue, but not to the uh, 2019 level. Um, Robbins' forecast is around uh, 2.44 million metric tons for Asia. Uh, meanwhile, the output in the Americas passed 1 million metric tons in 2020, with a further increase forecasted for 2021. And you can, um, we'll see later that the main driver here is, is Ecuador. So breaking down the, the output in Asia, we saw falls from all the main production countries in 2020. Indian production came down the most, dropping around 200,000 metric tons to around 570,000. Forecast from Robbins is for this to increase a bit in 2021 to around 600,000 metric tons. Uh, then good recoveries are expected in China, Vietnam and Indonesia also. Um, Thai production is also, also forecast to increase. So I'm going to quickly run through the various production countries in Asia um, in isolation, starting with India. So here you can see an Indian production forecast um, seen, seen on its own, the other countries. We'll discuss with um, Robbins and Manoj later where they think the recovery is forecasted to be slow after the 25% drop in, uh, in 2020. Um, Samson is a bit more, more bullish on India, as we will come to later. Then looking at China, um, Robbins here has a forecast for an increase of 14% um, in 2021 to, to 570,000 metric tonnes, which is obviously a contentious figure because uh, you know, it's, it's not in line with what, what the government says. Um, but it looks like the, um, the bottom has been hit here and production in China is increasing. Um, as we will see later, prices in China are also high at the minute due to uh, strong demand in the, uh, in the live market. Looking at Vietnam, the, uh, the forecast of Vietnam is, is an increase again after the drop in, uh, in 2020. So an increase of around 10 percent to um, roughly 500,000 metric tons, around 90,000 metric tons of production in Vietnam is, is Black Tiger, according to uh, Robbins' data. But we will discuss this more later, but Vietnam is actually seen as a strong contender to pass um, 1 million metric tonnes in future years. Looking now at Indonesia, um, Indonesian production dropped 6% to around 285,000 tonnes in 2020, um, but it's expected to recover in 2021. The forecast we have is for production to hit 330,000 metric tonnes in 2021, which would be an increase of, uh, of 60% year on year. Around 35,000 uh, metric, 35, metric tons of this is Black Tiger. The Indonesian government is, uh, is, has very bullish growth plans for the sector, um, which we will also discuss uh, later on the panel. So you can see here, Thai production has been steady at or just under 300,000 metric tons since diving from over 600,000 metric tons in 2010 due to EMS. Um, the forecast is for production to edge up in 2021. But is there any way to increase beyond this? Um, it's another question which we can talk about on the panel later on. Now we're going to turn to look at the, um, the point of view from Growbest on, um, on Asian production. So you can see here the, uh, the forecast provided for, uh, by Growbest for this webinar, which is uh, directionally similar, but more bullish than, uh, than Robbins's. Um, also, interestingly, um, Growbest has India passing 1 million metric tonnes by 2025. Um, which is something that we can definitely discuss more on the panel later. Then in terms of the, uh, there's a lot of um, data on this, but the, essentially the, uh, what, what, what's being said is that the driver for, um, for, for production growth predicted by Growbest is, uh, is more intensive farms in Indonesia, Vietnam and Thailand, as well as um, the land availability in India for, for more extensive farms. 
Now we're going to turn to um, to uh, to Manoj's view here um, on on India. So we can see here, um, looking at the forecast which which Manoj has supplied. Um, he uh, a bit more bullish than Robbins, but predicts um, a twenty percent drop really from from just over eight hundred thousand um, metric tons in twenty nineteen to just over six hundred thousand six hundred and ten twenty in um, in twenty twenty. And as we'll explore uh, more on the panel, um, Manoj doesn't really put this drop down to COVID and does not see a kind of major recovery happening in in twenty twenty one. Here we can see a very interesting chart which, which Manoj supplied showing the cost of production um, broken down by size in India. Um, so to put it simply, the, um, the bigger the shrimp, the lower the cost. Um, however, of course, the, the issue is in India that the main market is the US, which, which demands smaller sizes. So something I'm sure which will come up on the, uh, the panel later. Another interesting chart here, um, you can basically see the, um, the increase in, in PLs um, to 72 billion in 2020, um, but actually that's resulting in decreased um, production, um, according to according to Manoj. The reasons for this are a lower water quality and persistent disease problems due to kind of increased intensification in, in farming in India. Um, and you know, Manoj can give more details on this later on the, on the panel. And these are a couple of interesting visual um, charts you can see here, um, this is the Dumas in, in Gujarat, which is where Manoj operates in 2009. Very few um, shrimp farms. And then you can see here in 2018 that the, the area has become far more kind of intensively farmed, um, which can, can, I guess, lead to uh, inefficiencies in, in production if not handled correctly. Now, turning to look at the Americas, um, this is breaking down the production of the Americas by, by country. Um, you can see that Ecuador is the, the, the real growth driver and the other major production countries, such as uh, Mexico and Brazil being the next two largest, actually dropped uh, in 2020. The forecast is for Ecuador to continue to grow in 2021 and also for the, the other production countries to recover. Um, Gabriel is a bit more bullish than Robbins on the, on the outlook, but we can cover that more on the panel. Looking here, close to Ecuador, you can see the dramatic growth over the past few years. Um, Robbins estimates around 750,000 metric tons in 2021 will be produced. Uh, but Gabriel is, is more bullish, predicting production could even go past 800,000 metric tons. Uh, the big question is, can this growth be sustained for Ecuador to pass 1 million metric tons? Which is again something that we'll come onto on the panel later. Now looking quickly at Mexico, um, you can see Production dropped to around 130,000 metric tons in 2020 and is expected to recover uh, marginally in 21, but still beneath the 150,000 peak of 2019. Similar story in Brazil. Um, production dropped a bit in 2020 and is expected to edge up to 65,000 metric tons in 21, but is again well short of the, um, the peak of around 90,000 metric tons in, uh, in 2014. Now, the next section of the presentation is to just quickly look at, look at pricing. Um, we can see here that this is essentially a chart from our, our data platform, which, um, which compares the, uh, the main production um, yeah, countries of shrimp. You can convert the pricing to dollars, where it isn't in dollars. Obviously, Ecuador is, is in dollars. And then you can compare the, uh, you know, the raw material to just give a sort of sense of how the different countries are um, comparing. And we're taking a 60 count size for comparison, although in Vietnam it's, it's a 50 count because we don't actually have data for a 60 count. Um, and you can see here um, how the prices, uh, the prices of a shrimp in China are way, way higher than anything else and are currently above $12 per kilogram in, uh, in week five, um, which is four times Ecuadorian prices and three times Indian when you translate that to, to dollars for, for the raw material. Um, and then you can see Vietnamese prices have increased considerably in dollars with, with Thailand next. India and Indonesia are well above Ecuador, um, but prices are also rising in Ecuador. As we can see here, looking in more detail at prices in Ecuador, you can really see here that the, um, you know, the, the pandemic had a pretty serious impact on, on pricing in the country. And prices actually at one point in 2020 hit the, hit the lowest level since, since, well, our data goes back to 2011 and it's, it's the lowest on record according to our data. Um, essentially, as Chinese demand fell, by contrast, prices in the uh, the main Indian hub of Andhra Pradesh have been uh, pretty reasonable throughout the pandemic period. 
And I'd assume a um, drop in production and continued strong US retail demand would be the reasons, um, but we can discuss this more later. Looking quickly at Indonesia, you can also see that the, um, the pandemic had a, had a really impact there. You got a, a dive in prices in March, but then actually prices recovered and were, you know, kind of pretty much in line with previous years. Um, then Vietnam, kind of pretty volatile picture actually in, uh, in 2020, but also then prices finished the year on a, on a real high. Um, and you can see that historically they're really not, not too bad. Yeah, it's a similar story with Thailand. You know, Thailand doesn't, the, the sort of uh, the trends of Thai pricing seemingly not really impacted by the pandemic. It was kind of following a similar kind of um, historical fluctuation that you'd normally see. Then finally for China, um, you can see here that the, uh, the higher demand for domestic shrimp in China for New Year has, uh, has seen raw material prices in, in Guangdong, which is kind of major farming hub, um, rocket. Uh, prices in week five are, are more than double what they were at this point in, in 2020. Then the final section before we get to the panel is just a quick look at some, some trade data for major um, importing regions. So first of all, we've got, got the US here. Um, you can see looking at the, the US market, which is the biggest in the world for shrimp, uh, 2020 was a was a strong year. The US imported close to 750,000 um, metric tons of shrimp worth $6.5 billion in, uh, in 2020, which is up 7% year on year. And then looking at this chart, you can see the evidence of that reduced Indian and increased Ecuadorian production in the US data. Um, India accounted for 272,000 um, metric tons of US imports worth 2.4 billion, um, which is down 5% in volume and 3% in value. But meanwhile, Ecuador sent the US 126,000 metric tons of shrimp worth $788 million, which is up 52% in volume and 43% in value. Then looking at the EU market, um, you can see imports are actually you know, down, down marginally, but still fairly strong given the, uh, the big drop seen in May when the kind of lockdowns, I guess the impact of the lockdowns first started to be felt on import data. From January to October, which is the latest data available, um, EU imports are down 2% to 629,000 metric tonnes, which is only actually a drop of 13,500 metric tonnes, far less than, than it seemed it would be at the, uh, the peak of the pandemic. Looking at China, um, China imports a very different story to the US and EU data. In 2020, imports fell 16% in volume to uh, 544,000 metric tons and 22% in value to $3.1 billion. Um, in the second half of 2020, imports actually fell 48% in volume to 205,000 metric tons and 54% in value to 1.12 billion. So it was a, a real dive in the second half.